Right, so uh, hopefully everyone can see uh, the screen that I'm showing. So, right. So this is the, uh, the slide link uh, I'll be pasting in the chat. So, um, and, and this will be the uh, repositories, which is to be the resources they bring to use uh, documentations uh, for the workshops. I'll also be pasting here. So, but right now, uh, I would like you guys to focus on the slide. Uh, just, uh, just going to give some like a walkthrough. So, uh, welcome to the Figma workshops. So, I'm pretty sure you guys are uh, 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 maybe aware of what Figma already is, or maybe some of you already have some experience, uh, but we're going to cover it later. So, before that, uh, I would really like to introduce a bit about ourselves. So, um, we are some tech clubs, and we have been established since uh, 2017. Uh, we have been uh, a lot organized a lot of events with uh, together with Google's AWS, uh, a lot of big conference like Google I/O uh, 2019, uh, stuff like that. And and we we strive to uh, build a community uh, in the tech, in the summer university circles. And um, our missions is to bridge the gap between industry and uh, education. So because we realize a lot of people uh, who graduate from the university. Uh, are not very uh, are not having a lot of experience in industry projects yet. So we are here to help you to uh, to, to get you some experience and, and get yourself exposed uh, into what the current uh, industry looks like. So uh, I'll be talking a bit about myself. Uh, so I'm Ray, the right side one. Uh, right. So uh, I'm a software developer at Map Seventy Two, also an uh, AWS student ambassador. So I'm also a freelance uh, web and mobile developer. So I, I currently is a head of marketing at Summer Tech Clubs. Uh, surprisingly, um, I, I'm technically still a first year student because I defer a lot. Uh, so yeah, so technically like that. So uh, Nick, would you like to introduce uh, a bit about yourself? Hey guys, nothing special. Uh, I'm Nick and I'm the president of Summer Tech Club like this term. Uh, same thing, I'm a freelance like, web and mobile developer. So I use Figma for a lot of like, designs and stuff. For this kind of like small projects, and yeah, I'm a second year student in software engineering, so I'll be handling the second session with the demonstration and shit like that. So, uh, have fun with the first one. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, let's let uh, get started. So, what is Figma exactly? Um, Figma, uh, in in definition, is a uh, is a design and prototyping tools for you to design your uh, web app, your mobile app, your, your desktop app, uh, everything you want. But do, do, uh, uh, do, do be aware that it's a designing tools. So you cannot make an app from Figma, but you can draw an app from Figma, right? So Figma essentially has these five uh, main features and only has these five uh, features currently. So it's designed uh, for you to to draw your app, uh, your desktop, your buttons, everything, uh, and also pr prototyping, which is for you to navigate between the pages. Like page one, when you click the button, it's going to page two. Uh, it allows you to have that uh, functionality as well. And collaborations, um, it's just like Google Docs uh, that you will be able to edit it online in web browsers real time uh, with your friends together. So uh, it's, this is a distinct uh, features compared with Adobe XD. So a lot of people uh, prefer Adobe XD uh, because uh, because it's by Adobe. Uh, but uh, there are, there are uh, a few other uh, features that wins over Adobe XD uh, because of these main uh, features, which is the collaborations. In Adobe XD, you currently uh, cannot have these features uh, that you just share your, your draft uh, to your friends and then we, you, you all edit together on the same draft. Uh, that is impossible in uh, Adobe XD for now yet. And the fourth one is the design systems, uh, which is a basically, you can think of it like a form structures or, or a collection of things that helps you to uh, manage all your assets, like your components, your buttons, your card, your navbar, uh, it allows you to uh, manage all these components. Lastly is the plugins. So Figma also strives to be a, actually uh, to be a third party plugin uh, platforms. So you can see they, uh, they really have like a new features after these five features because all the other features can be uh, done by using this plugin. So plugin is an external uh, power up from 
external party. So uh, you can even develop your own plugin to achieve your own functionality in Figma. All right, so to recap, this is the only five features, design, prototyping, collaborations, design systems, and plugins. Okay, so without further ado, right, uh, we, we don't talk much. Uh, we, we just start, uh, get started. So um, you can click on this link uh, that will lead you to the uh, GitHub page that uh, I'm going to talk a bit about this GitHub page, uh, GitHub repositories. So these repositories uh, will consist of a documentation of what we are going to do like this, a step-by-step -step documentation. So if you cannot catch up on the later sessions, don't worry, uh, because first we will be sending you the recording. Uh, secondly, we'll be you'll be having these documentations, uh, step by step uh, documentations that you can work through by yourself. So yeah, uh, but for now we are not going to uh, use this much yet. So uh, I would like you guys to move to the figma.com. So I'm gonna paste this uh, paste this link here, uh, figma.com. So right, so so to to refresh again, uh, if you can't catch up like this, don't worry, just watch. Uh, because later we'll be sending you the recordings and, and you can actually follow the documentations to, to achieve this, uh, the same steps that we're going to do later. So right now we are in the figma.com and this is the basically the, the Figma website. Sir. And you can see there are like uh, features, uh, basically like all these new, uh, all these features that they have and then they have like pricings. So uh, for Figma, right, it is free for starters, uh, especially for us. So and and even uh, at, at my level, and I, I constantly receiving a lot of projects and, and uh, client projects, uh, I rarely go to the professional as well because uh, the starter package is already sufficient for almost uh, almost every part of your designing uh, phase. Right. So uh, by default, it's free. So I, I want you guys to uh, sign up first if you haven't, uh, or log in if you had already signed up. So I can choose a, a new account. That uh, to sign up, uh, to create an account, and once we created an account, we will be leading to this page. So uh, just keep uh, any name, maybe a, a quick name. Skip. Uh, should be for for the plan, right? Choose the starter package because it's free. Just choose the uh, starter and no thanks. So the first thing I want you guys to do uh, when when you have reached this step, uh, is to go to the top left uh, file icon and click the back to files. So, uh, okay. so once we click that back to files uh, button, uh, then we will be navigate back to our dashboard. So on your left hand side, you can see the site map. You have your uh, portfolio, your, your settings that you can uh, do everything here. Now to settings for your like avatars, your names. And then you have your search, which is to search your projects. But currently, we don't have any drop right now. So uh, you'll be empty. And recent is your recently viewed uh, 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 draft. And also plugins. This is where you can install all the plugins. And also the drops. Your drops here will be like your, your most used sections. Uh, because from here you will be able to create your own draft and 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 nav basically navigate between your drafts. Huh? So uh, we, we don't bother about why is this first uh, because um, it will not be covered in these sessions. And uh, you can also like, create a new team if you want, but we won't be covering this. So we will be focusing on these drafts sections and uh, and on your top right side, right top right border sides, you can see there is these two icons. So one is import, where you can import your, if you're familiar with, with Sketch before, you can essentially import your Sketch file or even import your Figma file. So later you can export the draft and then make it both uh, draft also can, or you can like import Sketch file if you have any. So, but right now we're going to click this plus button, uh, which is the new file buttons. So click that, it will redirect you back to this uh, draft. So this is essentially your draft page uh, that you can see you have your, uh, your, your toolbars and then your settings uh, and, and your panels. Uh. So, so the main green uh, gray arrow here 
will be our artboard. So um, when you're trying to paint something, uh, trying to make a drawing, right, you definitely need an artboard. So a draft is essentially the artboard for you to draw everything. So I'm going to explain a bit about uh, these tools. Uh, so this one, I, I think you're very familiar with already. So which is the uh, uh, navigations. And uh, you have the, the move tool, which is the, uh, for you to move around and make it become a mouse. Uh, a frame tool for you to uh, choose like all the screen size and, and frames that you can have. And also the shapes tool. Uh, for you, like create multiple uh, like different kind of shapes, rectangles, uh, po polygon, leaves, uh, and any other kinds. And then you have your pen tools, which is to create your custom shapes. So you can use the pen tool if you want to create your own shapes. And and uh, but but we rarely we use this up because it's kind of like a advanced features. And there will be like a text tools for you to uh, like create the text. Uh, and also the hand tools for you to pan around. So uh, the hand tool for you to pan around. So uh, there are like some hotkeys. So if you hover any of them, right, you can see the hotkey uh, for this is V, for this is the frame is F, for the hand tool is hash. So uh, you can click the hash, you can press hash to switch to the hand tool mode and press V again to uh, back to the cursor mode. So also, you, if you want to have like a one time of hand uh, tool. Frame, frame. Uh, sorry. Uh, one minute. Uh, I think you're going a bit fast. Let me just make sure that they're all able to follow. Is it OK? Yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, guys, you're all OK there? Did you all manage to create the account? Did you manage to log in? OK, all good. You managed to follow all the instructions, right? OK, OK, OK. okay. Rain, you can continue. Thanks, Rain. No worries. Uh, OK, so gladly we, we still can catch your attention. <laughs> so, and and uh, for actually for the hand tool, right, you have a, a more shortcut way that you, because every time if you want to change the pan around, you have to click the hand tool again, and they want to switch back, you have to uh, press the V again. Some kind of, uh, is a bit troublesome. So there is a shortcut for you, which is to press the space bar uh, to trigger it for once. And then when you release your space bar, uh, space bar it will automatically uh, return back. So space bar, uh, space bar like that. So it's quite convenient. OK, cool. So on your left hand side, uh, it is where your layers, uh, the tree structures, your elements uh, will be shown here. On the right hand side is your designs and prototype and code. So we'll be covering this later. But essentially, we like, I would like to talk a bit about the top right side. So this one, right, uh, uh, you can see your own name here or your own avatar here. So when you have a lot of friends to join, uh, you'll see like, a lot of icons here. Uh, but the, I, I would like to focus on the second uh, one, which is the share buttons. This one allows you to share this draft to everyone uh, by Maybe, I mean, for now, I can just copy the link and I would like to set the permission with everyone with the link can view. And you guys can go to this um, this draft and you can join the, the draft. So I can see like a lot of people have joined already. Then you can see, oh, wow, I see a lot of uh, curses. But for now, you guys won't be able to uh, edit because, because I don't want you to edit it. Uh, right. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think there is a maximum amount of people that can join. <laughs> oh God, please. No. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, uh, Stop it. <laughs> anyways, never mind. Uh, it, it's good. Um, because uh, most of the time when we when we share this board, uh, draft to other uh, all my friends, right? And we're having fun with editing editing together as well. So sometimes I will propose it that like, delete other people's stuff. Lah. So which I which I I know why, which is why I said that uh, the permission to can view. Lah. Because I don't want you guys to delete my stuff. OK, let's back to the uh, syllabus. Um, so right now, if you look at the documentations, uh, we will first by creating a single uh, buttons, a very simple buttons. So before we create the buttons, right, uh, we would want to have a frames. So click on the frames tool, a frame tool, 
and then uh, choose uh, just a phone uh, drop down, and then there is the iPhone eight uh, iPhone eight uh, screen size or iPhone eight uh, frame. So click that, it will create an iPhone eight uh, frame for you. So yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention why is the zoom out, which is to control zoom in, zoom out. I'm pretty sure it's a common uh, common keys. So you we have created a, a very simple frames and you can create a lot of other frames as well like uh, tablets uh, desktops even a paper or a social media kind so uh, so, uh so, so no surprise that you can actually create your design like if you want to create your own instagram uh instagram story right or anything most often uh, i'll be using this figma as well though it's not like a very proper way to do but uh, it has like all these pre-configured uh, frames for you lah. So uh, right now we have the frames ready. Then we're going to use the shapes tool, the shapes tools. So we choose the rectangles or type uh, or press R for hotkey, and we click that. And inside the frame, we click and drag. So you can see it draw like a rectangles. Uh, simple stuff, draw like a rectangles. So right now, what we want to achieve is a uh, same kind of a design from a bootstrap. So if you guys don't know what is a bootstrap, uh, basically it's a CSS framework for you to ease up your works for, for a lot of things, right? So uh, we're going to create like the same, uh, uh, the same colors and same border radius and same styles for the bootstrap buttons, right? So first, uh, first of all, we need to create a text. So click the text tools, uh, click on top of the rectangles. Actually, you want to click anywhere else, okay? But click on top of the rectangles and type primary because I'm going to create a primary button, right? So click on the primary and uh, sorry, the type of the, the type of primary, and you can see it's here. So I want it to be like a, a bit, a bit uh, shorter and also not to uh, the height not too tall, and make it a bit like this, a bit longer, a bit, and like this, right? So. Uh, so right now we have like a basic rectangles plus a text on top of it and we want to have these colors so how do we get these colors right and uh for here um uh, a bonus knowledge is that you can install this colorzilla extensions uh colorzilla extensions it allows you to pick any uh any colors on on the on the screen so you're going to click these colors and it will copy to the clipboard so uh, how do we change the colors for the rectangles? Is that you first by highlighting the rectangles, you can do by either choosing the rectangle itself or goes to the layers here uh, and click on the rectangles. You can, there's two ways to do that. And also uh, you have to be very careful that uh, it has to be inside the frame. It has to be inside the frame. It cannot be outside of the frames uh, or, not, or not later will cause some unwanted behaviors. So it has to be inside the frames. We keep on click on the rectangles, and I want to focus on the right hand side, the right panels. You can see there's a design prototype and code. So right, we uh, right now we want to focus on the designs, and we want to change the properties for fill, uh, fill. So we already have the colors right, and uh, we're gonna paste it here, and voila, we have the we have changed the background. So uh, if you don't know the colors, uh, no worries because you can like uh, click on the color icon. And then maybe you just choose any uh, blue blue colors. Uh, it doesn't matter. So right now, uh, you have choose the, the the blue colors, and we want the text to be white as well. So click on the text by choosing by like, clicking it or from here, and we scroll down. You can see uh, we can adjust it for the text here. So uh, but for text, right, it's also uh, for us to want to change the colors. It's also the fill. Click on the uh, the the color icon and drag it to the top left to make it become white colors right so almost there uh, almost there but right now we want to achieve uh, you can see like a border radius for the button right how can you do that so uh same we click the rectangle click on the rectangles and focus on your right hand side you can see like this uh these are the properties that you can adjust so you can play around for others uh, but for now we're going to focus on this when you hover it, you can see like corner radius. So I wanted to type three. Three now. Three is not enough. Five. Hold on. Wait. Yeah, five. Hmm. I 
send like a stroke here. It's no stroke, right? Oh, oh yeah, someone is highlighting it. That's not stroke. <laughs> someone is highlighting it, so that's why I thought it's a stroke, right? So it's not, it's not a stroke. Uh, it's not, it's not a border, but someone is highlighting it, so that's why you see like these blue borders. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you highlight it, uh, different people you see like different, right? So uh, we had like changed to five already, and uh, and we're almost there. So uh, I would like to copy this so just no one can can highlight it. And this is the actual effects. No, <laughs> please don't highlight it. <laughs> and uh, and right now, right, if you want to move in, right, so you can see like if you just click on the rectangle and move, then you just move the rectangles. But we want to group them together to make it a button. So we can do this by uh, highlight all of them and right click uh, group selections. So later on, uh, you can see there's a frame selections. Uh, later on, Nick will talk a bit about this but we're going to choose the group selections to group them. And on your left-hand side, you can see it becoming a, a group. So we want to rename this as a primary button. You can do by uh, do this renaming actions by right-clicking it and rename. Again, right-clicking it and rename. We want to rename this as a button, a button like this. So uh, you can see we have, uh, so right now, if you just click on the rectangle, we move them together sir, because it's a group already for now. Okay, so so far so good. Is uh, everyone able to catch up? So to, to recap, uh, what we did just now is that we adjust the border radius uh, by clicking the rectangles, go to the right panels, uh, adjust the uh, border radius, and also adjust the, the field colors. Okay, cool. So uh, if you got any uh, any question, you can just text here, uh, and I think uh, Nick will be answering it, or you can just turn uh, unmute yourself. Now. Okay, cool. So right now we want to make these buttons uh, to the middles of it uh, of the frame. So we can do this by clicking this and drag. So uh, you can see when you're dragging it, right? Uh, yeah, the the Figma has the built-in like a pen tools and alignment tools for you to to align by itself. Uh, so it's very convenient. So right now we have this ready, uh, and congrats, you have uh, reached your first milestone. Uh, very simple uh, buttons. So now we have created a simple buttons. Let's uh, try to create a more more complicated one. So I uh, I want to make this kind of buttons uh, with the glowing effects and the linear gradients. So let's start to do this. Uh, we we can do this by first copy this. Or, or save this image. I'm gonna save it uh, on my desktop. So how can you import uh, image into Figma? Right, it's very simple. You just click it and drag it uh, and drop it. So you can see it automatically import the files. Uh, yeah, very simple stuff. So we make it smaller a bit and uh, make it right here so that later we can reference uh, here. Okay, cool. So this is our target, uh, uh, everyone. Yeah, this is our target. So we want to change the background colors uh, for the frames. So we can do this by first selecting the frame itself, uh, the iPhone 8 uh, frames. And we want to change the background colors. So uh, again, the background colors is the few properties here. So uh, highlight these frames and scroll down to choose the few. So click on the color icons, it will show this pop up. And I want you to choose this color picker icon. So choose the color, color picker icon. And you can see it, it enable, enable me to like uh, choose on any colors on the screen. So uh, we're gonna hover this right here and click on it. So if you if you can't like uh, download the image or if you can't, uh, uh, if you can't import it, uh, so this is a frame, uh, this is a hex colors for uh, the background. Okay, so, uh, and then we want to make a, do a bit of adjustment to the text of the button. So it's a you know, glow button. So let's change the text uh, by double clicking this uh, and change to glow button. So right now you can see that this text right actually overflow uh, the rectangle itself. So we don't want this behavior because every time if you want to do this, we have to like you know get, keep adjusting ourselves. And sometimes if you drag it too long, uh, it'll be very troublesome. 
So I can show you a very simple trick for you to, to uh, avoid this. It's that you uh, hover over the buttons or highlight it and focus on your right hand side, there is a auto uh, layout uh, properties. So click on it and it will apply the auto layout. So what is an auto layout? If you are familiar with CSS, right, uh, you can see that uh, it actually apply the flex properties. And also, uh, by the way, it, if you are very lazy to code on the CSS, you can actually co uh, copy it from here. Uh, it generates the CSS code for you. So uh, uh, the auto layer will apply the flex properties to this element, and that's what we want. So we have applied the auto layer, and let's try to change the text again, which is called glow button. So you can start to see that this button uh, actually grow uh, together with the uh, content. So it's better like, because from here we can adjust the paddings, uh, horizontal paddings, we want to make it like more, more, more longer, or uh, vertical paddings to make it higher. But for now, we make everything into uh, in default. Like. So we have this, and let's move it to the center to align it. And almost there, uh, we would like to make the border ridges to make it look like this. So we can do this by double clicking the rectangle with uh, the buttons again and adjust the corner radius properties. So I suggest you to adjust until like 50 because uh, any after will, will be useless uh, because it won't apply anything. I mean, it's not like after 50 pixels, it's just that this rectangle uh, has the max capabilities of applying only 50 pixels for the radius. So after applying it, right, uh, you can see you almost have the shapes already. Like, and I want to make the text to be uh, bold as this. So double click the text and focus on the text uh, sections here. Regular, make it to maybe black. Yeah, perfect, almost there. So uh, I would like to make, you can, if you can see, right, this uh, button actually has a border radius, uh, oh, sorry, a border, uh, border line, which is almost this kind of red colors. So we want to apply that border line as well. So we can do that by clicking again the buttons. Scroll down, and you can see there's a stroke here. Stroke means the border, uh, border line. The border, yeah, the border line. Yeah. So when you click on it, it will automatically like apply the default uh, borders. But for now, we don't want the white colors, right? We want these red colors. So the same, we can click the color icon, uh, color pickers, zoom in. Uh, to find the exact uh, exact uh, pixels. So, but same again. I'm going to paste this uh, hex code here. So if you couldn't couldn't get the uh, pixels uh, colors, so you can see it becomes like this red colors. Perfect. But we still want to have the the last part of the last second part of uh, the button is the background. So you can see it's not like the solid colors, but rather it's a linear colors. How can we apply that effect, right? It's like the same. We go to the click on the buttons and uh, scroll down, choose for the fill properties and click on the color uh, icon. So you can see on the top left side of this pop up model, right? It has a drop down. Click on the drop down and choose linear. Click on the drop down and choose linear. So you can see that like, applies the linear gradient. Uh, and, and we want to have like the exact same colors. So same. We have to ensure that we click on the top first. So uh, you have to ensure that you click, you highlight the top, uh, this dot by clicking on it. And then uh, and the same, we choose the color pickers, uh, top left, choose these colors. And same goes to the bottom, you click on the bottom one, and then uh, go and select these colors. Right, so the top, uh, I'm going to also share this hex code. So, uh, top is this hex colors and uh, bottom is this hex colors. So just in case you couldn't get the hex colors. So we have this and almost there. Uh, right now you can see that it's, it's supposed to be like, uh, from top left to bottom right, right? But our one is like top to bottom. So we can adjust this again. By, uh, if, you, if you accidentally exit, right, don't worry. You can click on the color picker again and it will automatically call this out loud. So click on the white dot on top of it and drag it to the left, top left here. And same goes to the bottom right, just like this. So you can trick around and see like to achieve like a similar kind of uh, effects from here. Uh, of course, it it, this one applies more linear gradients effects. 
but uh, this is good enough for, for the current status. So you can trigger around in, in future and I will leave that to you. And the last effects that we want to apply is the drop shadows. So we can do this by going uh, again, the design tab, uh, scroll down to the end, uh, there's an effect. So you can see right, just now we already uh, cover like these frames, uh, that these properties, auto layout, uh, fill, stroke, and this uh, we're going to cover the effects now. So click on the effects. You can see apply uh, the default drop shadows, but we don't want these drop shadows. Uh, it's not, although it's looking okay also, like I want exactly this one. So again, uh, click on the, I don't know what this icon called, uh, sun icon, is it? Or light icon. Yeah, let's click on that. And then uh, apply uh, maybe 25 of the blue, zero Y. And the colors shall be the, uh, this one. Uh, drop shadow colors, drop shadow colors, like this. So, uh, so this just apply this exact uh, values, 25, uh, these colors, and you have to ensure that your opacity is set to 100 uh, or any any amount that you like. Uh. So if you think, uh, oh yeah, this is too much, then uh, maybe you can change the blur to further away. Uh, so you apply it to further away. And one thing that I realized very convenient is that uh, most of the time when I do CSS, right, I couldn't, I still couldn't remember the properties for for box shadows. So fret not because it generates the the everything for you, including the linear gradients functions and also the the box shadows uh, uh, properties. So you can, so most of the time you just copy this and then paste it in your code. Right? So it's very convenient to do. And and essentially, that's it. Uh, we managed to to create a more fancier uh, buttons uh, for itself. Yay! Right. Um, so that's essentially the draw uh, features for the Figma. So you can see like there are like a lot of other shapes. But uh, say if you want to create like a card, right? You can also do the same for uh, for the button. Like, like just create a, a simple rectangles and then adjust a bit of the the, the border radius. They make the field to white and it applies some effects. So, and then you have like a very simple card in material designs. So, this is a very simple card, right? And then you can copy and paste, and you paste it somewhere else. Here, this one here, just like this. So, uh, you can see like everything actually is just a shape tools. It's just a shape tools. Uh, the card, you know, the buttons, the drop downs, uh, everything. Uh, you just like how you do in the paint 3D or paint itself, draw rectangles, uh, very simple rectangles that, that can achieve it already. Okay, cool. So we have covered the design features of the Figma. Is everyone still okay with the progress? So, uh, three, two, okay. So I assume like everyone still can catch up. Like. And uh, the next features we're going to cover is the prototype features. Uh, of Figma. So um, before we actually cover that, I want you to hover over the iPhone 8 titles, hover over it, click it, or you can actually choose it from the uh, left panels, click it, click the frame, and then copy and paste it. So I think everyone is a uh, is studying programming computer science, so you guys should know how to copy and paste, right? Control C and B. So paste it, and uh, now we're going to cover the prototypes. So click on uh, on the right panel, click on the prototype tab, click on it, and you will see nothing happened, right? So right now we want to say link uh, this page to this page. So to, to see some changes uh, before that, uh, let me try to delete this. So uh, go back to page one. So just to see some effects, right? and uh, also like click this go to page two. So we want to have like a basic, basic navigation between this iPhone page and another iPhone page. So we can do that by again, going to the prototype tab, click on it. So you will go into a prototype mode. So if you want to go back to design mode, you want to uh, make some changes to the design, you go to the design mode. And then if you want to do prototype, you go to prototype mode. Uh, Okay, so we have now switched on the prototype mode. 
and I want you to hover over the go to page two button and then click on this white dot, click on it, drag it to this page. So uh, apply the same effects to the page two, uh, hover over the buttons and click on it and choose the, the, the white dot and navigate back. Okay, cool. So you can see like there's a very uh, a blue small play button. This uh, button stands for this is the starting frames. So when you later present it, you will start from these frames. So what if you want to start from this page is very simple. Focus on your right panels. Uh, there's a starting frame here. You can choose the frame here. So you can see uh, the, the blue play buttons goes to here already. But right now we're going to go to the default one. And now here comes the magic. Um, on your top right nav bar, you can see there is this play buttons. Click on the present. You will see it opens up a new tab. And, and essentially you have this prototype ready. So uh, you can see if I click on the go to page two, it'll go to page two, page one, page two, page one. So this is what we means by prototyping is that uh, when you present to your clients or, or your, for your assignments, you will usually like uh, show them, uh, send them this link uh, and then they can play around. Uh, they can see like the actual navigations between uh, the pages uh, and then uh, you can you can interact with it and then you can, you can feel like it is an app. This is what we mean by prototype. It's a fake one, but then it is good enough for people to see the interactions, right? So, uh, right. So we have actually like covered the prototype. And if you want to change like different form, right? Uh, you can change it here like, or different frame. But then because uh, we originally choose for iPhone eight uh, frames, then we have to choose for iPhone eight frames uh, as a starting point. Or else, right? Uh, you will see if I choose an iPhone eleven different screen size, uh, it will show this weird, uh, weird behavior. It, it, it cut out, uh, it, it fill out the spaces. Okay, so we're going to choose the iPhone 8. And uh, you might be wondering, right, why do we need frames? Uh, why couldn't we like, you know, create a new rectangles, uh, exactly just like iPhone 8 screen size, and then change the white color? It, it looks the same, right? And and it looks the same, but but what's the difference between a an, frame and a rectangle? So by uh, by the framework itself, it stated that if you are using a rectangle, it won't give you the functionality of a frame. So what is the functionality of a frame? Is that uh, you can do prototyping. You can switch on to prototyping. So you can see like even in the frame itself, right? There's a blue dot here, but then when you hover the rectangle, you don't see any blue dots. So Figma treat this rectangle as a shape, but if you put this as a frame, it will treat this as something that you can navigate, it's something that you can do prototyping. So, and it also very, uh, very important is that, uh, so say if we uh, have like, something that is scrollable, right? Like, and, and most often than not, your, your page wouldn't be like, just one page. So you have like a longer page. This. So click on that right, and try to drag it over like this. Drag it longer. So, so it now becomes a scroll, uh, uh, it will scroll. So uh, let's go back to the, and now you can see the keep, we, we can scroll here, we can scroll here. And by using a frame, it allows you to be able to uh, scroll by choosing the overflow behaviors. And by default, uh, for because it's an iPhone uh, uh, frame store, so you can actually uh, scroll around it. But uh, just remember, whenever you want to make something that is scrollable, use the frame. Okay, and uh, we have covered the design features, the prototype features, and I think uh, I think a lot of you have actually like, tried out uh, for the collaboration features. So I hope you guys won't break this, but I make you guys be able to edit. So yeah, so I made you guys to be able to edit that you can try, if you, if you couldn't edit, like try uh, try to refresh the page or whatnot. Uh, then you can start to edit. So everyone can start to like you know, collaborate together and and in the meantime, you know, I can do my stuff, you can do your stuff like that. And uh, the fourth feature is the design systems, right? So I'm going to go through this very real quick. Uh, is that uh, I'm going to take this uh, card as a example. Um, so right now you see like, I, I keep copy-pasting the, copy the, the card, right? So it's very troublesome. 
what if I want this card to have uh, I want all the card to have like a different uh, sign to become become like a red drop shadows a red drop shadows but it will only apply to different shadows it won't apply to others and if imagine you have like you know, 20 screens or 20 frames then you have to edit every single card one by one and that's very troublesome right so let we can do this by utilizing the design system features so what I want you guys to do is that uh, click on these rectangles, click on the card, right click it, or you can go to the uh, middle, uh, the, the nav bar, the middle of the nav bar. You can see like you, you can enable it as a mask. You can create a component and edit objects. So edit objects will change this, become like a shape tool. Uh, but, but we are focusing on this create components. In future, you can like maybe explore a bit about yourself, like maybe what is a mask in Figma, but for now, we're going to create a component. Click on the create components, and you can see even in the uh, the tree structure here, it makes themselves become a component. So uh, right now, uh, let's try to delete this and paste it here. Paste it here like this. So uh, you can see like the child, uh, the copied instance of the components will have the different symbols. And they say uh, actually the, the parent, the root components will be shown in the different symbols. You can you can uh, search for your uh, components that you created in the assets tab, in the assets tab, and, and you can find it here. So I can click and drop to, to create a new instance of the components. So right now uh, you can see like this, Three cards is an instance of this uh, card, right? So once I change the colors, maybe say these colors, you can see they all change together because all these other uh, cards is a instance to the components, or basically a, co a copy of the components. Huh? So by doing this way, it allows you to have a better management because I, I can just you know uh, edit it once and and every other will change at the same time. So I don't need to copy and paste and edit everything at once. You know, edit everything one by one. But what if I want this card, just this card has a different uh, style instead. I can click this and right click it and choose detach instance. Uh, again, I right click the card and choose detach instance. So once you detach it, right, it will uh, clear the reference to the component and you are now free to edit it uh, uh, individually. So, so, so yeah, that's how you can uh, manage your components, manage your buttons, manage your cards, manage your uh, things like that. Uh, I, I won't be covering more into like uh, how can you uh, manage your colors, or, or you can actually go and uh, research it online a bit, or I can just cover it now. So you can see that there's a this for uh, thought, right? Is that you can you can actually have a lot of like default colors. If you want to create like a uh, colors that is for shortcut, you can choose this plus button to create a new style. And once you create it, right, uh, you'll be able to like have a like a quick access to these colors just by clicking on it. So it's the same concept. Is that uh, these colors is a reference to the color components, right? Just and just just to showcase what you can do with it. Okay, cool. So. Uh, and I think basically uh, that's it for the uh, basic uh, Figma uh, functionality that you can do. So to record, uh, to recap, right? Designs basically use the shape tools, uh, prototyping by switching to prototype mode, and uh, what else? Collaborations, uh, right? Collaborations, and the design systems, and the last one is the plugins. So uh, the plugins basically enables you to have like a uh, external functionality. So one plugins that I would like to share, so there are like tons of other plugins, right? But I love this particularly is that it's called H3ML to Figma. This plugin, H3ML to Figma. So what this plugin essentially did, right, is that it will convert a web page like this into a Figma file. And then after that, you can just drag it here uh, or, or you can type here and then type HTML to follow this up here because I have an install. Yeah. But basically that uh, that plugin right it allows you to export any single website and then import it into Figma. So if you particularly like GitHub designs, you can actually export it and use it as a as a reference to it uh, and then import it. So it helps you like create all the frames, create all the shapes, 
uh, with it. Uh, so it's a very convenient tool. So we can see like with all these plugins, you can do a lot of stuff. Maybe you can integrate it with uh, panels, you can integrate it with Slack, I don't know. So there are like tons of tons of plugins that you can do. And I think that basically sums up my part. So uh, so whatever we talked just now is actually uh, covered here that you can see like we have uh, covered here already. So if you can't catch up, uh, just refer to this documentation or watch back this recording. And I would like to pass back to, uh, I would like to pass back to Nick to, to share a bit about uh, 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 practical projects. Uh, Nick? Yay, hello, hello. Yeah. That's me, that's me. It's my part now, yay. So, <clears throat> sharing my screen right now. So yeah, we're running a bit short on time. So we'll try to like make this as quick as possible. So bear with me. For this part, you actually don't have to follow. I'm just going to uh, walk you through like how uh, you can actually use Figma for designing and stuff like that, and especially uh, on your assignment. And that's really important, right? So right here, uh, are you guys seeing my screen? Uh, Ray, are you seeing? Yeah, yeah. All right. So here you can see like a web app. Oh yeah. By the way. Um, just to mention, this is actually a desktop app, so it's actually not from the browser. Uh, I like to use it because I don't want to, like, you know, flood my whole tabs and stuff like that. So yeah, it's just like one single-purpose app, so it's gonna be good. So yeah, right here we have a web app, so it's just like a proof of concept, like an e-commerce app. So we are tr we will try to like make this into a mobile uh, mobile app. So Actually, I've already made it out. Um, yeah, so this is the design. But yeah, I'm just gonna walk you through like how you can actually use Figma to kind of design all these uh, pages for your mobile app and all the convenience tool that you can use. So for example, uh, let's just get started. So the left top F bar, just select the frame and choose iPhone 11 Pro Max. So yeah, right here. I'm just gonna put it right here. So I'm gonna change this name. Uh, as you can see from the left bar, like we have got iPhone 11 Pro Max. So another way to rename this kind of thing is just double click. So yeah, that's what I do. Let's say test. Okay. So we're gonna change the background of this page or this frame. So click on fill, the pen tool, or this like, what do you call it? Water driplet, droplet, I don't know. Yeah, just choose on the black color and there you go, voila. So uh, let me show you like uh, one cool tool that you can use. Uh, so actually this kind of like piggy, right? You can't just like draw it yourself and you're gonna waste a lot of time. And all this like search bar icon, like, you're not gonna draw it yourself, right? So uh, one cool tool that you can use, so we just go to maybe find an icon. This is a website for like a lot of free kinds of icons that you can use. So for example, if you find piggy, piggy, and you've got a lot of PEs, right? So yeah, I'm just gonna select this. So not the same thing, uh, what Rain did just now. So if I download, and I'm gonna choose FVG for the pixel, and free download, that's it. So just click on it and drag it to your app. And there you go. So yeah, it's a bit big. So <clears throat> one cool thing that you can uh, do with like resizing and stuff, because you don't want it to be looking like this, right? So Another thing is just hold on to shift and click on this, uh, what do you call it, right bottom and just drag it. So it will go, like, even though if you fling it around, it's still going to like remain it to the original ratio. So that's going to be good. So looks about identical. Well, actually it's like completely identical. Nice. So yeah, just set that in the middle. And by the way, always make sure that it's in the frame. So you can check it over like the left bar, yeah. And we're gonna do some text. Let's see, yeah, you don't see it because it's black color. Just change it to white color. So for this purpose, I'm just gonna use like this font if you're interested, audio white. So you can choose your different fonts here, like even. So yeah, for this purpose, for demonstration, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna use audio white. So yeah, let's type in piggy.co and change the font size a bit bigger. Set it to the middle. Yeah, seems about right. So, and as you can see here, there's this like description. And yeah, to achieve that effect, again, just type in like any word. 
Oops, why is it not showing? Not showing. So what's this font again? Let's check. So yeah, another cool thing is that you can always select the text and just kind of check what font you're using. So I'm using Arimo for this one. And by the way, guys, uh, this part for this part you don't actually have to follow because I'm just going to be rushing through and uh, demonstrate how you can use Figma. Yep. So change that to this font, and this is just the font size. Set it to the middle. You say like your everyday arrow supply. Okay. Set it to the middle. Yep. Of course, like you can see, the two are very uh, similar to each other. So you want to make it distinct and you want to make the title or the yeah the name of the company more obvious and more emphasized. So what you can do is actually go to fill and choose this 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 thing. It adjusts the opacity of the text. So if you change it to like lower, and it makes the name of the company more uh, emphasized. So yeah. And the thing is, uh, let's just go on with this. So this is button. So we'll try to make this very simple button. So click onto the rectangle tool and drag it to your liking, oh, like however big you want it to. Wow. That's what she said. OK. <laughs> yep. So this one, let's change the border radius to 10. Well, right, let's change it to white color. Got it. So another thing, same thing. We're just going to type in some text. So let's say login. Actually, right, if you are in this with me, um, actually, sometimes you don't get the results that you want with the text. So actually, there are a lot of things that you can customize with your text. Um, for example, there's this thing called uh, letter spacing. So if we change it to zero, right, which is originally how, how it should be, it's going to look like this. And let's just say if you add stroke to it, it's going to look pretty goddamn big, right? So let's say if we change it back to like 4.5, like 0 0.5, it's still going to be looking a bit compact and not very visually pleasing. So what we can do is actually adjust the letter spacing here. And yeah, it's a bit nicer in my point of view. So yeah, lastly, just copy this color over there. And yeah, there you go. Oh, don't forget about the stroke as well. That's it. So now you can, another thing that you can do is actually group them together. So I always like click on this and just hold on to control shift and click on the login as well. So it kind of like highlights them together as you can see from the left bar. So this is like, one of my habits that I do. Yeah, if I want to select the rectangle, right? Actually, if you only tap it on once and you drag it, it's going to select the whole thing. But if you tap it twice, it's going to focus on the rectangle. And you can just copy out the rectangle itself. So I can get the rectangle out. And let's see what we can do with it. Oh, yeah. By the way, if you copy out, uh, it's going to be in that group itself. So you can drag it out over at the left bar. So it's going to be pretty convenient. So make sure you master this tool from the left bar, because uh, that's kind of important. And let's just change the fill, this fill to, oh, actually, we don't have to change the fill, but you can just like remove the fill itself. Yeah, so it disappears, but it's still there. Uh, let's just click on stroke and give it a stroke and set it to white color first so you can see it. Yeah, but as you can see, it's a bit quite, like, quite different from this one. So actually, for strokes, right, you can change uh, the size of the stroke. So for example, if we set it to four, it's going to look a bit similar and change the color. Actually, for design, right, uh, you would like to make the con like color theme more uh, as consistent as you can. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to copy uh, the color from the PE itself. So yeah, there's a bit, what do you call it? Harmony <laughs> between the designs. So I'm just going to copy this text. And let's just say sign up. Obviously, this color is going to be a bit dark for a back, a black background. So let's change that to white color. And again, group them together. Yeah, so there you go. There's this really simple landing page for, for you. And let me just like kind of uh, present it to you guys, like uh, what's happening over here. So let's go to prototyping. And let's just play this and kind of see what happens, OK? So for these three pages, right, I've added some prototyping um, effects. So actually, with 
all this like kind of prototyping, right? If you click onto any space that is not intended to, what do you call that? Uh, there's no effect for prototyping. So for example, if I click on the PD, it's gonna highlight the login. So login is actually uh, the one that has the, what do you call that, the effect to prototype. So if I click on login, it's gonna bring me to the shop page. And with prototyping in Figma, actually you can do something like this, like a really simple animation to scroll. Yeah. And yeah, there are a lot more for you to discover. So yeah, again, if I click onto anywhere that doesn't make sense or it doesn't navigate me to another page, it's gonna like highlight. Uh, it's a bit small, you can't see it, but there's just like a shop, shopping cart icon. So if I click onto it, yeah, it's gonna bring me here. And lastly, uh, there's no effect here except for checkout, which is gonna bring you back to the landing page. So yeah, there's some really like uh, simple kind of prototyping that you can do. So I'm just gonna bring you to the last step, which is how you can actually make this uh, horizontal scroll view. So I'm just gonna copy this component and be careful and set it here so that you can paste it in here. Nice. So if it's here, Make sure you copy in a few more instances of that. Let's just set it to almost the same height and bring them back into the test itself. So actually you can see here, uh, it's actually overflowing. So this part, it's actually overflowing. So you're not seeing anything from here, even though that actually exists uh, like Few other cards, right? So actually, what you do, right? If you bring it out, you can see it again. So what Frame does, right? Actually, it kind of like uh, senses all those like outside views. So for all those overflow, it kind of like just hides it. So what we're gonna do, right? So for these three components on the left, you can see it here. I'm just gonna highlight all of them. I click on it and do frame selection. So actually, what essentially what you're doing is actually you're making a frame within the frame. So that's possible as well. So if you make this a frame, even though it's not sized like uh, iPhones and stuff, you can still do some prototyping uh, effects with it. So with this frame, we get, we're gonna set this, this, uh, what do you call that? And just set it back here, around about here. So you're gonna see why. I'm just gonna uh, make this like overflow behavior. So yeah, this part that is overflowing, we're gonna change that behavior into horizontal scrolling. And yeah, let's just test it out. So uh, remember to change the starting frame to uh, the intended one. So for example, test, and we're gonna cl click on present and just test out. And it works, nice. And another tip is actually, for this frame, you can actually see uh, the rectangle is only covering up this side, up until around here. Yeah, around this size. But when you're prototyping, right, actually it kind of slides to the left, right? If you want to prevent that from happening, you can actually click on this frame and just go to design. And right here, you can see like this very detailed stuff. It's called clip content. So if you check on this, right, so it's actually going to hide all of those that is not within this frame itself. I mean, not within this rectangle itself. So if we drag it a little bit to the right, you can see it reveals like the part that is hidden, okay? So if we go to go back to prototyping again, if we swipe, as you can see, it's gonna hide all those like that is going out of the frame. Yeah, so that's what you can do, like pretty simple stuff. So I, I imagine like you can uh, cover a lot of stuff like uh, vertical scrolling like this one. If we have a lot of products that goes down and down, right? Maybe you can think of some way to make it, uh, what do you call it, vertical scrollable. Yeah, so these are all the tasks that you can research on yourself. Uh, I'm not gonna bother like explaining that because that's gonna like go over the time. And lastly, what was I supposed to present again? Oh yeah, exporting. So actually for this kind of frames, right, um, you can export them. So right here at the design tab, right? Design tab again, just click on the frame and go to the very bottom, click on the export. Uh, you can choose like a lot of like different suffix. You can choose like different sizes and I mean like, what do you call that? Uh, ratios and stuff. And you can choose the format itself. Yeah, you can even do it as SVG. It's free, really, really convenient. 
So yeah, if we export, I'm just gonna save it into trash. If we go to trash, you can see it. There you go. Pretty nice. Yep, that's very convenient. So you can use this for your documentation and stuff. So yeah, that's pretty important for detail. And lastly, I'm just gonna share one, my favorite tool actually, my favorite plugin. This uh, Rain just now shared one, so I'm gonna share another. Uh, just to show you like how powerful these uh, plugins are. So if I'm searching for dog and search for like a dog image, let's see, uh, this one looks good. Yeah, just right thing on it, copy and bring it into here. Right, so if we, if you discover a lot of plugins, actually there's this one plugins called remove BG. So if I select on this image and I go run this remove BG, and basically this plugin, what plugin does is, right, uh, it's gonna run for a while. And yeah, it removes like the background. So it's pretty convenient when you're trying to steal like some icons off the internet. Like for example, this one. Oh, no, maybe, uh, yeah, these actually. You can paste in, go to plugins, just remove. Select a node with image fill. Let's run again. Let's try. Yeah, it's pretty darn convenient. There you go. That's how you can steal off like different stuff off the internet. And yeah, that sums up for my section. Uh, I hope you guys like enjoy. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it actually. Oh, hope okay. you guys enjoy. Yeah. Sure. Uh, thanks, Nate. Uh, that's a uh, quite a yeah, quite a good one. Uh, so yeah, so it's quite different. Way. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it's a bit. Oh uh, yeah, cool. So okay, cool. So thanks everyone for joining. Uh, so oh yeah. So before that, we're gonna have a Q and Q and A sessions. So uh, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, for any questions you guys can ask right now. If not, we can end this like session quite early. Uh, so we need only like took you like an hour of time. Hopefully that was like, uh, what do you call that? Productive or efficient? Efficient, 100. <laughs> I think we have time. Don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, okay, cool. Guys, so, okay? can show any sample of your client products? Sure, uh, right? Uh, yeah, that will be good actually. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can get some ideas. Let me spin on my desktop. Rain, you can, you can show the SEC website as well. Oh, sure. I'm showing my screen, right? Cool. Yeah, so yeah. uh let me go to drop and so uh just to show uh this is one of the apps that I uh that Frankie and I created for SCCA. So if you know what is SCCA is then you know if you don't know then it's okay. So the that so yeah. So usually right um I'll be having like a, a frame just to keep on like uh to, to store all my components and uh, to make everything uh Organize up so at least uh and you can have like a node here and then you have your design systems like for for this uh colors and maybe some other things so and then we're going to um uh, put this out into like different uh different features so the first features would be like uh, the member quarters that you're going to make so uh this is essentially like uh all the features that we wanna so uh, we're going to group them up uh so that in in development phase. We, we can assign uh, uh, some people who work on specific uh, features. So instead of like everyone just work on the same things, like we, we, uh, usually in, in uh, development, we just split into different teams. So you can see that there are, there are like a lot of uh, features that we want and different minor features uh, like that. So uh, cool. So uh, I would suggest you guys to, to have like a centralized uh, uh, frames to to do these things. So the first thing that you need to do, right, is to uh, either in design or something. Right? So you have to do uh, this. Define your color scheme. The second one is your typography, and then uh, the third one. Actually, there's no third one, but just these two. Uh, most important one is the colors and the typography. So and then the look and feel. Uh, you're gonna create it. So uh, my strong suggestion is that you always start with buttons because one button is very easy to create and it's sort of like uh, set up the tone of your uh, or your whole things. So yeah, 
Um, and also, if you are worrying, uh, like how can I choose the, color, the colors? Right? I can. I suggest you guys to go to this color hand of code. Uh, color hand of code, and uh, you can see that there are a lot of colors here that you can choose. So these are like all the uh, already mixed up uh, a very nice uh, color mix that you can choose or refer to. We say not still, uh, and there's even a Chrome section for it. So strongly recommend these websites for choosing the color blocks. And okay, so yeah, uh, is there any other questions? Yep. Uh, Rain, can present the your ACCA the interface? Like the Here. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Part? Like start the prototyping. Ah yes. Oh, prototyping. Yeah, sure. So you can see the starting uh starting frame is up here, and you can see like more often than not you have like a frame as the prototyping. But uh, yeah, that's how it works. So right here, then you can see like this. So you can uh just sign up, then like continues, continue. So then your client will be able to like see. Oh, oh, don't worry about this one. Uh, it's not going to be a production. So, uh, yeah. So uh, you can choose this, uh, and then yeah, maybe go back, event portals, join groups, uh, randomize, join groups, and then all these like uh, features that you can do, right? So you can even create like this kind of uh, native behaviors, uh, and like this. So this admin dashboard, they'll be able to manage everything. Uh, like that. So yeah, um, basically just clicking and dra dragging, like you can achieve a lot already. Yeah, <laughs> just click and drag, uh, and, and pointing to your one. Uh, but but we're taking all this gonna be a bit messy, la, But yeah, yeah. I mean that, that's what it is, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. So. Uh, maybe maybe if you really want, right? Um, the the next uh orchestration you can do is to split each features into one draft so imagine that this member portals will be one draft another features will be another draft uh, so that you can have uh, a better management so and even if you, you want to go even further you can sign up for the team features that you can uh, have a board uh, store like each designs and to make it even more organized but I just think that for, uh, for for small and medium one uh, a simple draft is good enough it's more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Actually, uh, it would be helpful if you guys provide feedback as well. Uh, yeah. In like future workshops, we will try to like uh, yeah, bring it to a better quality. If this one's bad, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> guys, any questions? Please ask. Any feedbacks from you all? After this, we won't be here, so you guys can't ask anymore. For <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So if you couldn't get a GitHub, you can always go to search for Summer Tech Club uh, accounts. Yeah, then... you can even join our Telegram group if you guys like seriously want to reach us. Or, yeah. yeah. And yeah, like Facebook, Instagram, and anywhere. Uh, yeah. We will respond as quick as possible. Yeah. Oh, there's a Telegram group, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, right. So the Telegram group is here. Oh, yeah. Actually, we we do have like some sharing sessions, like that we recently just start to practice. So every Saturday, actually Saturday night, we have this very small like uh, sharing sessions about like different types of technology, and we just kind of like have one presenter and just teach the other like participants. So we take turns or like. For anyone who's interested, you guys can like uh, just come here and like present stuff like that. Yeah. So, so uh, we have covered Blenders. So if you know what is Blenders, is for 3D modeling, and we have covered SwiftJS for front-end frameworks, uh, and we had covered uh, what else? Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, and also D3JS uh, for data visualizations, and and there will be much more coming up soon uh, in, in future. So uh, we really hope that in future we can see more and more people. Uh, take the initiative to share anything that you like. So Sorry, uh, just now for the data visualization, what you are introducing? Uh, D3 D3 JS. D3 so, JS. Yeah, D3 JS is a 
uh, it's actually not for data visualizations, but it's more to uh, manipulating documents. But then uh, it has a uh, based on data. So uh, for for us, like uh, all these data analysts, we we use this often uh, to create sophisticated uh, data visualizations. So uh, yeah, like that. So you can see like all these things, right? It's actually powered by D three. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's it's quite a common tools that we use in uh, in companies in industries that for to create all these things. But if you want like a very simple normal uh, tools to just create a chart, right? I actually recommend that chart just uh, is straightforward. Uh, you know, just input the data and then you upload the chart for you. But D three is more to more uh, sophisticated and complicated kind of uh, visualizations. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so I think if there is no any questions, so thanks for everyone to uh, joining and your patience. And do follow us on uh, social medias. I just page it here so you guys can follow. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just click on and then uh, we have, uh, if there is any like upcoming events will be posted here as well. Uh, yeah. Okay. So thank you everyone. Uh, if you have any questions, just ping us on social media, GitHub or Telegram. Thank you. thank you, Nick. Thank you, Rain. We appreciate it a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank too you. for giving so, this no, opportunity. No any questions or any feedback from any of you? Thank you. Oh, uh, and the recorded session, right, where uh, it will be available? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mar Marcus will be sending to the groups. Uh, the oh, okay. oh, Unity okay. Workshop. We, we, do have, uh, we do have a Unity Workshop last time. Uh, like last, last, last time. Year. Last year. Last year, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I think if that's it, uh, see you guys next time if there's any. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, do join our Telegram group as well uh, so we can uh, can show you the assuring session as well. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. See you guys. Thanks, Ray. Bye -bye. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Thanks guys. a lot. Uh, have a nice bye -bye. weekend. Bye bye. Yeah, you guys too. Yeah. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye.